Ladies and gentlemen, today's the point in our course which marks the study of the potential barrier. Perhaps the most popular problem with quantum mechanics when we're dealing with physical problems in one dimension. I mentioned in the previous video is that now we're going to reach that idea of how a particle can tunnel through a physical barrier and end up on the other side. Something which you obviously wouldn't get in classical mechanics. But before we reach that destination, we need to take a lot of steps to reach there, which maybe I'll take about 40 minutes in total to reach that point. Because really, we need to understand the, the inner depths of the problem because it's not that easy as the free particle we have dealt with. The free particle was an easy problem or the potential step. So I do honestly hope with perseverance that we've reached that last point of really understanding this idea of tunneling. Now I'm going to try my best to make the information and the lessons as concise as possible so that I can pass the information to you as quickly as possible. That's what science is all about, sharing new information, making new discoveries, and sharing the world on what we know about the world. All right, so the potential barrier is the particle of mass m that is sent from the left on a potential which is defined as this. V in terms of x is equal to zero for x greater than zero, V not for x uh, between zero and a, and zero for x greater than a. Now, as you can see, the barrier is really this center, um, this center definition over here, v naught, when x is equals a between 0 and a. I sketched out the potential as I can see over here, and I ignore this uh, expression for now. So as you can see, this is what we call a barrier. Now, just for some general knowledge, if, if the thing, if the potential dips down like that, it's called a well, but that is uh, for our subsequent lessons. So as always, this is the barrier, and we want to investigate where the particle goes through the barrier like so. Now, as always, we need to isolate the cases of the energy values. Now, as you can see, if I start the energy value over here, which is obviously where our tunneling phenomena would, would, would show itself. When I increase the energy value, there'll be a change of sign when I take V minus E. So I need to now isolate the case, or at, I will at least first isolate the case where the energy is greater than the potential V naught. Now, let's again do some classical arguments. What do I have? Well, classically, uh, what I have is that the energy of the momentum of the particle is 2Me square root of that. Then I will have a 2Me minus V naught square root of that and back to 2 me uh, yeah, square root of that. And just like the potential step, there will be full transmission of particles if the energy value is above the potential for uh, a classical mechanics. That's what classical mechanics tells us. Uh, it's what we normally call a basic scattering problem. Uh, the momentum decreases at this point, uh, that just lowers the speed, but there's a full transmission of particles. Now, we're going to infer a quantum mechanics study, and as always, now we need to go back to the Schrodinger equation, right? We need to go back to the Schrodinger equation, solve for these separate regions. Now, as you can maybe already see, all we need to do is solve for this point over here and for this point over here, because, well, basically, the energy value is really the same at this point and this point, when we compare it with the potential, there's no potential. So, I'll do this very quickly, since we should be uh, experienced enough in it. Uh, for showing the equation, well, the first one, the potential is equal to zero, so it'll be zero over here. Bring the energy value over, multiply by minus 2m uh, divided by h bar squared, and you will notice that you have a plus over here. So the solutions will be ik1 and minus ik1, where k1 is given by the square root of 2me divided by h bar. Okay? Uh, notice again, we got the imaginary numbers. Um, I'll do that quickly because now maybe it's more difficult for when we do the other one, the, the point where x is between 0 to a. So when x is between 0 to a, we we'll solve the Schrodinger equation, but this time we put the potential v naught. What we'll have is that we have uh, the second derivative of psi because I'll multiply by the minus 2m divided by h bar squared, and then I would have a plus, all right? Because when I bring the, the e over this side, it will be v naught minus e, but later I will multiply by the minus. So when I multiply by minus, I get a plus, right? I get 2m over here, and then I will just get E minus V naught, okay, bringing the, the energy, bringing the multi, multiply sign inside there. And then when I do that, I'll get this uh, divided by H bar squared equal, uh, multiplied by psi equals to zero. And because again of the plus over here, I would use that the form of the second order differential equation where the solutions are linear combination of E uh, I to the I K2. Okay, this time it's K2 because I need to write a different wave number. Okay, K2 is square root of 2m uh, E minus V naught, whereas K1 is 2m E uh, square root of that. Uh, you know, divide by h bar. So these are the solutions that we have. Just rearrange showing the equation again in this form. Recognize it's a plus sign. Uh, write the solutions as this over there. Now. 
again, I reached that point where we want to isolate the case where the particle is traveling from the left of the potential barrier. Now, when the particle travels to the left of the potential barrier, I can say that yes, the solutions, remember, the solutions represent the, the waves of the particle that travel to the right, which is given by when the imaginary number is positive and when the imaginary number is negative to the left. So, for, for psi 1, which covers the solutions in this area, I got the wave traveling this way and the wave traveling this way. For psi 2, the same thing. Waves traveling this way, wave traveling this way. But for psi 3, I only have the waves traveling in this way. There will be no particles that will travel from the right to the left, all right? Because there's no reflection. The particle starts from here, there's some reflection, or at least we must kind of say that there can be reflection. We don't know yet, but there can be reflection, there can be not. It comes in calculating the reflection and transmission coefficients. Same thing over here, but when down here, you, see, you can see that there's no potential over here. So basically, the particle, the wave, uh, light behavior of the particle just travels in the direction to the right. And that's why I can cancel this solution over here, like so. All right, then again, to infer the quantum mechanics study, what we need, we need the transmission coefficient. I left the reflection coefficient now because uh, we just want to calculate the transmission coefficient and we can take one minus that to get the reflection coefficient. Borrowing the previous result is the transmission density current divided by the incident density current. So my question to you is that this transmission density current actually corresponds to this solution over here. Right? I hope you know you can kind of look at the problem because what we ultimately get is the particles that get transmitted over the potential barrier. So we want this, this solution psi 3, which is this solution over here. The incident density current is really just this over here, okay? This solution A multiplied by E to the IK1A. Uh, forget that, you, know, you don't use this B because this B is really, yes, psi 1 covers the solution from X minus zero, but this B represents the wave that's traveling towards the left. So we don't use that solution. Now, drawing from the previous result, the potential step that is equal to that, noticing that uh, numerator and denominator is K1 because the wave number in these two regions are the same, K1. So this will cancel out. And what we need to calculate is the intensity of the wave this and the intensity wave over this given by the magnitude of E and a square that.